All right, here we go. First time ever, owned the vehicle for about five months. I have 4,200 miles, 4,241.5 miles, eight gallons of gas. Gonna refuel it for the first time. Here at NJ Renewable Energy, we typically don't make angry or negative videos. However, over the last year, this gentleman, Neil Cavuto from Fox News, spends long periods of time perpetuating ignorance and misinformation regarding the Chevy Volt. You can Google or YouTube many of the things he says, and I'll try to attach a few videos when I'm done, but here are just a few comments he's made over the course of the last year. As soon as I heard you had to plug it in, I immediately said, come on, the Volt is a joke. You see this car you plug in? The dumbest thing I've ever seen. I have a problem with any car you plug in. I'm telling you, Congressman, that's the dumbest car I've ever seen. Someone bought off Motor Trend. Do you like the Volt, by the way? I think it's a piece of... It's a Fred Flintstone car. I think in so many levels, it's just stupid. Roller skates with a plug. More people saying you have to be adult to buy a Volt. American people have weighed in on this and say it's stupid. I won't read any more of his quotes, but he goes on for days about how his wife won't remember to plug it in, he won't remember to plug it in, the neighbors won't be able to plug it in, you'll never remember to plug it in, you'll get divorced, on and on and on. So what on earth is the deal? Why are we carrying water for, I guess, the Republican Party or maybe oil companies? What does he have a problem with an American car company trying to change the way we do business? If it's just because you hate Barack Obama, I don't think I can really do much. But let me try to explain it to you. For starters, here's oil consumption in the United States. We use about 71% for transportation. This chart easily shows our growing dependence from foreign oil from the early 60s up into the 2000s. Okay, Neil, this is the top 10 nations that supply us with foreign oil. Now let's look at number three supplier, Saudi Arabia. All you avid Fox News watchers may recall this country's name. That's where 15 of the 19 hijackers from 9-11 were from. Now, for the record, we can't hold a nation responsible for the acts of 15 men. However, considering they treat women extremely poorly, to say the least, they can't even vote, I just as soon keep my money here. And speaking about some of these nations, here's a volatility chart of each nation. You'll notice that every single nation other than Canada is either ranked high risk or very high risk. Peak oil. I won't get too technical here, but in short, we've run out of cheap oil. The party is over. And last but not least, we have catastrophic climate change. Yes, Fox News, it exists, it's real, and the rest of the planet is trying to prepare. And if that wasn't enough, we have basic pollution issues of air, water, and land. So, Neil. Let me recap. We use a lot of oil, but we don't have a lot, so we're dependent upon other nations to give it to us. And some of those nations aren't so great. Some of them actually don't like us. It's also a finite resource, which means that we have a limited supply of it, and in actuality, we're starting to run out of it. Thank goodness we had a global recession, otherwise, you know, peak oil would have already occurred. But the other thing is, Neil, beyond the fact that fossil fuels create problems like asthma and make the air and water dirty, it turns out that after we've been spewing this stuff in the atmosphere for 100 years, that it's actually starting to change the weather. Yeah, can you believe it? The weather. But follow me here. Some people initially called it global warming. And then there were people on some news stations when it snowed said, listen, that's, it's bullshit. We got a foot of snow, so it can't be happening. But uh, it turns out a better terminology is climate change. Because what happens is 
in areas where it was really wet it could be dry or areas where it was really dry it could be wet so it gets a little complicated but just understand that things are changing and when I say changing I don't mean necessarily for the better because when it gets warmer things can happen the oceans can rise or species can die or disease can spread it, again very very complicated stuff I know you guys like to talk in in simplistic terms but some scary shit anyway I don't want to bum you out here and I'm sort of getting off topic but but let me bring it all in together and explain to you what some people are trying to do it would appear that many of our problems can be solved but by doing one thing and that would be converting ourselves off of fossil fuels into renewables. Well, wait a second, how does that work? Well, renewables are like solar energy or wind energy or geothermal. And we could get lots and thousands of jobs or millions of jobs by creating this, this new industrial revolution inside the United States. That's what's cool about this stuff is it exists here in our country. We make it. The sun makes all this stuff, and we don't have to go to other countries. And we wouldn't have to send our armies to other places across the world to sort of stabilize and secure that oil, because we wouldn't need it. And it also doesn't run out. This, as long as there's wind and there's sun, we could just do this forever. I mean, up until the point where the sun burned out, then we would be screwed. So it, it isn't forever, but as far as we know, it would be forever. So now there's jobs, and I, in theory, less war, and the air and the water are cleaner. And if it's not too late, if the tipping point of climate change hasn't already hit us, we can stop the oceans from rising and, and maybe stop the climate from getting warmer. So it just seems like a win-win situation, don't you think, Neil? Come on, I, I, I got to be getting inside of there. All right, so it's, I've been talking for, uh, what, 10 minutes now. What the heck does this have to do with the Chevy Volt? Well, I'm going to tell you, Neil, the Chevy Volt runs on electricity. And electricity isn't a fuel source. It's not a resource, but it's a form of energy. But the good news is, is all these things I'm talking about, um, solar or wind or even some biofuels, I don't want to, get you all off on the wrong direction here, but all these things can run the car. So instead of having to use fossil fuels that we talked about are dirty and bad, we can use renewables with this car. That's why it's a great idea, Neil. That's why the Chevy Volt is cool. That's why Motor Trend and all these other companies think it's a great idea. You, you see, you, you, you got it now? All right, I, I know I got you thinking that maybe you were wrong. So I think this is the final thing to push you over, Neil. Check this out. This is the Chevy Volt app. This will remind you if you forget to plug in the car. It will send you an email or a text if you forget. So you'll never not have the battery charged when, it gets, when morning comes. What what do you say now? And it better not be that I just use a double negative and therefore it's not true. Hello, sir. Yeah, here's the uh, pumping engineer. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Trying to stay dry. This is the first time this Chevy Volt's ever been uh, filled with gasoline. I've had it for 4,200 miles. What's it run on? Electricity. Why you put uh, it finally, uh, the, the battery just ran down, and I, this is the first time I've ever needed to fill it. So here we go. This is where it goes in. Never done this before. Cash or credit? Uh, credit. Yeah. All right. We're back. We're What's back. What's your name, sir? John. John. John is. Uh, John, up. you're witnessing history here. 4,200 miles. It, it came. The gasoline that it came with, that came with the car from the dealership. It's, it's about nine gallons. It took me 4,200 miles to use the nine gallons. I put 8.28 gallons, 27 bucks, after five months. 